Hello, I am the Awkward GM Corbin, and you are here for what is the preview of the various different uh, game lines that have, uh, not game lines, you have, you're here for the preview of Curseborn, specifically the manuscripts. I'll be going over them as much as I can. Uh, again, I will say that uh, a lot of what we have here is still sort of like, want to we want to make it so that uh backers are actually getting stuff <laughs> first up we're going to be covering uh back backer uh 2a which is the uh lineages for dead the lineage the families for dead rather sorry and then after that we are going to be covering the hungry manuscript I'll try and answer questions as best as i can i'm not a developer on this so i am not going to be able to make rules calls for you, except for me to say, ask your story guide. Uh, that seems to be uh, a, something that people should know for a few things, but um, we have had some discussion in the Discord. I'll try and be privy to that a little bit, like mention that if anyone wants me to, uh, or ask any questions relevant to that so that I can like point you in the right direction. The dead have been out for uh, about four days, three to five days now, and the, the uh, hungry just came out. Uh, double checking when the next one is dropping. Um, David Dice Blade 4 asked, so now that we have seen two full lineages, do you think that it helps trying to figure out figure out a cursed society. I think it does for uh, a fair bit, especially because if you're a story guide and you want to figure out, like, if you want to set up things for a city game or something, you don't necessarily have to have every lineage or every family present in there. Technically, and this is just technically in my opinion, you could take the lineages that have been released so far, uh, the dead and the hungry, and you could just have a city that is just full of dead and hungry and have them fight each other out, or uh, make truces, or have interpersonal real, like drama and things of that nature. I will be running uh, a little self-plug here. I will be running uh, Curseborn Family Feud tomorrow night at 8pm, and that is going to focus a bit into more family politics. Um, of the various lineages interacting with each other. So it should be a fun time if you want to check that out for how I will run it. It's not necessarily what the uh, developers think. Because honestly, as soon as this get, as soon as these books get given to the hands of the players and the game masters, it's really up to us to make a decision. Uh, like we're like we are the final call when it comes to rules at our own table. So we're going to go a little bit in here. I'm going to read some of the fluff pieces just so that you get a little bit of a sense of the setting. Additionally, I will. Sorry, I have a lot of stuff around. I additionally, I will be setting up. I will be going into detail about the mechanics as well. But I again, I can't cover everything. And for the dead, I might I might and I I'm, I'll make some call outs for specific stuff, as it were, because I know that some people are like want to see what changes from the ash cam might have happened. And I have noticed a couple of them, especially with the hungry. Um, if you were wondering why hungry are <laughs> have no longer have the Bane sunlight listed for undead strength, uh, your answer will you'll you'll be. We'll be talking about that in about 20 some odd minutes, and we might go into detail about other stuff if we have time. Uh, again, ask questions in the chat if you wish to, and if you wish to back Curseborn and haven't already, there is also a link. Um, boom. Uh, and I am going to put up the privacy filter here because I am not allowed to just display the rule book willy-nilly however i will display some of the stuff that is mechanical in nature but not all of it <laughs> so this is the overall uh introduction into lineages uh it seems familiar from the ashcan so i won't read it for too long you must be new here that's okay everyone starts new 
That's how these things work. Walk with me. I know it's overwhelming at first, but you'll get used to it. I'm sure by now you know the world is fucking cursed. Sure it sucks and bad shit happens. What you don't know is curses are tangible. It's a web of connections and layers that date back to the dawn of time. Pull a string here, and it can reverberate across the whole damn planet. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm Claudia, and I'm here to help you understand. You're one of us. You're the accursed. You might be asking yourself, what the fuck does that mean? That's a fair question. I'm going to do my damnedest to answer. Others will give you a more in-depth rundown of who we really are, but first the basics. Of course, you're here with us because no one in your family chose to have an ounce of empathy to let <laughs> let you let you this to tell you this stuff. Look, your families are probably assholes like mine who cling to the way things have always been. Tradition and all that shit. They had to learn the hard way and think you should too. Fuck all that. We're your family now. Let us know if you need anything. Let me go into a little bit of detail about how the world is cursed. You see, there are basically two kinds of curses. There are little curses, everyday bullshit, like getting your shoelace caught in the people mover at the airport. And then there are big curses, damnations. These big curses are life-changing affairs, where little curses hang around waiting for someone, anyone to trip over them. Damnations are direct and personal. You don't just accidentally trip into a damnation. Someone bestows it on you like the worst fucking inheritance you can imagine. That someone can be your grandpappy who got cursed to high hell and back for pissing off someone extremely powerful, sins of the father and all that, or it could be someone bumped into you on a subway and decided you looked like a good target to vent their anger on. Now, if you have been following what has come out for Curseborn before, you will know that some of the families, some of the lineages are known to be like blood relation or even uh, can be inherited through like marriage and adoption to some extent, especially with the outcasts. That one gets mentioned a lot. Additionally, with uh, the primals uh, talking around with uh Matthew Dawkins about that at one point we had um the spawn of vodnik are primals who are probably one of the few lineages that are just blood relations they try to not take in people who are not uh not a spawn of vodnik and then you have the other ones such as like your hungries who bestow it upon probably via some sort of em I would say the term embrace or like siring. In the case of the dead, it was especially pointed out that someone I think has to damn you and it doesn't have to be a person or an accursed, but I'm not a hundred percent sure about that. We will get into those details probably down the line. We do have additional discussion about the outside, provenances of the outside, maybe there are gods, maybe have minions in the world called the Archons. That's the name us outcasts give them, and since they're literally trying to lord over us, everyone calls them that too. Our world has its own powerful beings called the Fae. Well, we did. Now they're gone. Where are the Fae now? Thanks for asking. Maybe dead, maybe in hiding. We see their influence in the world still, but sorcerers tell us they haven't been around for a long ass time. You best hope that's true because the stories say they are a nasty piece of work. Then there are normal people, most people dealing with their own shit to pay attention to supernatural things going around going on around them but sometimes someone gets a bug up their ass and decides to act if they're alone they're mostly annoyed 
an annoyance, but sometimes they group up and that can be dangerous. That's it. I mean, no, it's not everything, but it's enough to prepare you. I'm sure you'll still have questions, but I don't have the answers. Maybe we can find out together. And now we go into the dead section, where we go into the actual section of the dead. One of my favorite... <coughs> One of my favorite lineages, actually, and I was surprised by that. I didn't really grok what the dead do. Um, general overview is that they are people who died and they can, they are cursed to possess their own body. Um, playing them in a Ashcan version was pretty fun. So let's continue. Imagine a party you can't leave. Whether it's a shitty party or a perfect one, it's fucking forever. My suggestion, have a drink or four and start learning some dance moves. You'll be on the floor for a while. Tatiana Karuyava <laughs> Fury family. So you're dead. Me too. I'm Sam. Welcome to the ship. We're not in hell, definitely not in any kind of heaven I'd imagine, and we're not nothing. I guess that means we're somewhere between alive and not, which is where you'll be for a while. Me? I've been like this for a few years now, at least long enough to show you the ropes. I'm going to start with the big picture, because I think that's, what's <laughs> that's what works best in this case. You died and didn't pass on. Instead, <laughs> you are stuck in your body, puppeting around like a bloody marionette. You are, at the very core, a ghost. Not like... Not like those other incorporeal sods who don't have a mind of their own and go on for ages. No, you still have all... You still got all your faculties and even your body in a weird way. You can leave your body behind if you want. I wouldn't suggest doing that for too long because something might happen to it. And then you're left scrambling to find a new one. How did this happen? More likely, someone you met cursed you. I know that's the shit answer, but it happens. I take a stab and say it was likely someone dear to you, maybe a family member or a co-worker. Those things tend to be more intimate than people think. Just know you can always also pass this shit on to someone. So if you're one of those revenge types, you can eventually get yours. Now, we can go into a lot of different divulging things about the dead. This is still sort of the introductory phase where it's a little bit more in character than the rest. But we do have different sections that go into a little bit more elaboration on what the dead actually are. It is, you know, I always get paranoid. I muted myself in any case. As, as I take a sip of water, please check out this poll I am putting up. Ah. Poll. For whether you like the hungry or dead. Duration five minutes. We shall continue on to the we are different than ghosts. So you're probably thinking that being deemed dead just means you're a ghost, which is partially true, but there's more to it than that. Ghosts aren't cursed like us, at least as far as we know. Think of ghosts as memory remnants. They are souls of individuals potent enough to leave a scar in the fabric of reality. They do have emotional resonance and can manifest in ways that look similar to the things we do, which can get us in trouble sometimes. When limping people think of ghosts, they think, of the, the spirit with unfinished business, the person traumatized by death that they, are keep, they keep reliving. What's funny is, is that half the time, those people are experiencing dead acting to their ur urges. I've been known to pop in front of a thermal camera a time or two to get a rise out of ghost hunters. Most ghosts, ghosts are pretty simple. They are caught in repetitive behavior cycles, reliving a familiar activity from life and wailing in the darkness. You can talk to them, maybe you can get a bit of gossip, but very few of them are fit for deep conversations. Ghosts come in many flavors as people do, 
making a coin toss if they'll be helpful, helpful or not. You'll see ghosts a lot when you're incorporeal, less so when you're in your body, unless you're actively looking for them. Now, this is something I will point out is that um, in the ash can, there was a special thing with, uh, with how the uh, cursed die were set up. And that was basically you could spend cursed die to see supernatural beings. So I think a lot of people are going to have fun time trying to like, I, I actually, I think in regards to being worried that you're not going to be able to see ghosts or interact with them, I feel like at the very least, you're going to be able to see them regardless of what curse type you are. So long as, uh, so long as you're like paying attention to your curse tricks that you can do. David Dice Blade 44. I love both dead and hungry. Thank you. I wish I had put up a both option. Maybe I'll do that after the current poll ends. In any case, uh, some of us take it upon ourselves to look after them, them being ghosts. Or at least try to keep the worst ones from freaking people out. Only the Zed family makes a concerted effort at settling ghost business to help them move on, though. We don't know if ghosts are thinking, sapient entities, and that's a philosophical conversation I don't feel like having right now. <laughs> so there is also... So you, uh, I just know that you'll end up dealing with a ghost sooner or later, so you might as well get used to the idea of it, lest... The necromancers make a fool of you. We can call anyone with a pension for taking to or dealing with ghosts a necromancers. Many dead are necromancers. You're natural at it, but we aren't the only ones that deal with ghosts. Of course, there are also sorcerers. Um, that's me paraphrasing. <laughs> and so, some normies have learned how to fuck around with things beyond their control. You may even run across some supernatural who just who has some ghosting ability. Anyone who can mess with ghosts can fuck you up if you happen to be incorporeal. Most dead wouldn't dare to treat one of us like a simple ghost, but other necromancers aren't always so pragmatic. But don't worry, you have far more at your disposable disposal than a few parlor tricks. Necromancers aren't the our biggest deal anyway most people who know enough about ghosts immediately recognize that dead are vastly different it's one of the things who what it's it's the ones who don't know enough that are the problem i call them ghost hunters others call them exorcists they barely even know ghosts exist but they're intent on ridding the world of them and often catch dead in the crossfire uh, so what are we imagine Eating your favorite food every day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's the same every time. You can't eat anything else. Sure, you may still love that food after a year, but you start to crave something else. Every time you want to eat something that isn't this food, it is an overwhelming sensation. Okay, now convert that to emotions. We feel emotions just like we did when we were alive, but now we crave something else, something more. The dead have urges to chase a high to get to the level of overwhelming sensation, that comes from experiencing something outside the ordinary. This is where we get into the damnation of the dead. Essentially, and the dead won the won the poll, but I'll put up another poll because someone said they wanted to have both in there, and I that was me forgetting. So if you wish to re-vote on whether you like the dead or the hungry, there is now a both option in there. And you can find that in the chat. Um, so basically the damnation for the hungry is that they want to incite the emotion that they are tied to. It, that they are tied to. Um, this can be inciting in others. We'll get into more on that when we get into the actual mechanics. Um, I'm not seeing anything here in regards to anything Oh, here we go. Everything in our existence centers around dealing with and fulfilling these urges. Because of this, we have a unique perspective on emotions and how to invoke them. In some ways, it's a good thing because it gives us a place in a cursed society. We're always chasing that high, and the best to do, the best way to do it is to surround ourselves with others. 
Speaking of parties, we have somewhat of a reputation for throwing them. I use the term party in the broadest sense of the word. Sometimes they're exclusive to the dead. Other times they're, <laughs> they're for all the accursed. I love that the uh, dead are the party people, and they even have something called Grand Wakes that are dead invite only where we discuss important family business. Uh, and they mention here that they're sometimes done in the French court <laughs> quarter, um, Soho, and Munich, which is awesome. Family is important. One of the only things you can... <laughs> Ways you can exist for hundreds of years is not lose yourself to your base urges is by building something. One of the first things we as dead constructed was our society. I'm increasingly persuaded our families form because the blokes who get first got fucked over realized that without structure, they'd become ghosts howling into the dark beyond or at least utterly unsympathetic to mortals, our fellow accursed and their myriad plates. Uh, I'm trying to think here. Uh, I think the first families were formed around whichever urges they felt most strongly drawn towards. Dead, like all emotions, but not always in equal measure. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Now families have individual goals, ways they interact with the world, and even how they handle the issue of how to procure a new body if you need one. That is something that dead need more than other uh, lineages. They actually have a resource that they are craving that is not something that they are craving in the same way as, say, a vampire with blood. If you're craving, um, if you are a dead and you have a dead body, obviously, you want to make sure that you have a replacement when shit hits the fan. If you don't, you are going to be screwed. And so getting territory in morgues or like places or graveyards probably is high up there. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Because most of us don't share blood relations, you could really join any dead family you wanted. In practice, dead end up joining whichever family found them first or where were there when they first reawakened. Sometimes it's a good fit. Other times you end up wishing you were with someone else. Sometimes a family has a membership requirement, but it isn't like you get to shop around before making a choice. The poltergeists ask you to sign a confidentiality agreement and mavens put people through a series of trials. Either way, you aren't likely to go door to door to find out all <laughs> what all the requirements are like you're do doing some fucking pledge week. I wonder if if you were to play this game, I would say like from the initial get go, you could just play with having your lineage, your family and your role paths already picked out. I wonder if you could play without having the family for like just an episode or just a thing or just a session rather, just so that you can like shop around for a little bit and then you decide okay i'm actually going to take this as my like my this family as my major family or something that that's that's probably like a high level play once people get used to the system and david iceblade agrees thank you friends are just as important you can certainly make friends among it sounds like urges isn't automatic um, that's something I'll get into in a little bit. Um, I think talking with some of the talking with some people, it seems as though um, a lot of the damnations are sort of like, even though like it's about reducing your curse die, I think there's something maybe about like the last curse die has to be given freely by the player in order to trigger the damnation. But I'm not sure. Oh, and this section is talking about. Uh, the friends across the various uh, accursed type. So the hungry, the outcasts, the sorcerers, and the primals. Uh, first off, let's talk about the hungry. They're not quite dead and live a long time, which means they'll be around to commiserate with you long after everyone else is gone. Unfortunately, that means if you piss one off, you'll have an eternal rival. Uh, don't let 
one suck on you though remember how i said your body doesn't heal yeah if they take all your blood it's gone unless someone can do some magic on you beyond that there are brilliant societal structures that would make the stodgiest zed cream his <laughs> cream his pants. Uh, you could learn a thing or two from that. Outcasts present an int uh, David Iceblade again. Oh yeah, that sounds right. I mean, you can probably choose the emotion you want the ur for the urge rather than it occurring automatically. We'll get there. I, um, I am looking at the time a little bit, so I might jump around to it. But actually, I think this is the last one before we get to the damnation. Um, so outcasts present an interesting case, blah, blah, blah. Outcasts make the concept of heavens and hells out to be real. I'm not a religious type, but the idea that they could just be on the other side of a bleeding portal is disconcerting at best. Um, to me, to them, this world is a trap. Neither of us belong here. That doesn't really give me a... Th this doesn't give me a as much to go on with how the outcasts deal with the dead. There is discussion a little bit about whether or not if heaven and hell exist in the outside, do ghosts pass on to them, which is an interesting concept. Uh, we do have uh, sorcerers here. Um, I can s um, where it talks about how the sorcerers have their own urges with their magic and the dead know that very well. They make good allies, hell, bloody good friends. Just watch out for what what they are asking of you. Besides us, dead sorcerers are the most capable with dealing with ghosts, which means they can do perverse shit to you. It also means that you have to <laughs> you have a go to person if you can't figure out how to handle a complicated haunting. Uh, then you have the primals. Feel big emotions in big ways. Follow one around for a day and you can satisf satisfy your urges for a month. Unfortunately for you, this is one of the lineages that won't just accept your presence without question. Um, do, do, do. If, you, if you do make friends with one, keep them close. Those blokes are stronger than us and are loyal to a fault. There's a little bit of discussion about the dead with the dead. I am not going to go too much into that there's some in information about various different locations in here um good section to go over um let's go on to the dead systems and can't really i'll 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 show the first section of this and do 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 so you have the being a ghost section, which is you basically bleed one curse die and your body goes limp, appearing to be sitting quietly or sleeping. Your character becomes an incorporeal ghost. While in ghost form, the accursed cannot interact with the physical world unless she uses a spell. She can pass through solid objects such as walls, doors, floors, etc. without issue. The character can cannot take physical actions, but may use any of her spells that do not require physical touch to enact. Now, I did have questions before where uh, is it is a ghost ghost being incorporeal also mean that they're invisible? It does. As far as I can tell from um, how they interact with like various other systems, I think uh, I think it was. Uh, I think it's like they have a practice for being incorporeal and there might be something about manifesting. I'm not sure, but I know for a fact with phantasms, uh, the way that um, the world introduction says it, um, it says that phantasms aren't seen. Like, they, they are invisible, normally. Um, so, no matter how far she ventures from her body, she can immediately return to it as a reflexive action with no expenditure of cursed ice. And if you spend a scene outside your body, you begin to bleed cursed ice, and for each additional scene, you still bleed cursed dice until you start bleeding your attribute dots and skill dots. Um, however, when you return to your body, you restore any lost dots, but not cursed dice, which is a good thing to know. Now I will transition transition back to having my little privacy filter, and we will continue. Um, 
So you have the undeath part. This basically means that your character is, uh, when you gain the take, if a dead's body is destroyed, either while she's in her or outside, she immediately gains the taken out status effect, then is considered unanchor until she finds a new permanent body to inhabit. The new body must not have a consciousness attached to it, so it can be brain dead or it can be inanimate. Um, there's a bunch about uh, bleeding, cursed eye, and things to claim a new, a new body that is permanent. Uh, and there's also the thing that if you do not, I, if she, if you run out of attribute dots, the dead's ghost form dissipates and is effectively dead. Any dot loss from being unanchored is temporary. And when she regains a new body, she can. I I feel like this used to say that you could be, if you were unanchored, you would turn into like an NPC phantasm or something. Or maybe that's something that someone mentioned in a in a podcast episode. I'd have to look back at the um, ash can to see if that's a change they did. Uh, we do have the lineage path here. Um, lineage path has an inheritance where basically it gives you a resistance to magical effects um, and status effects. Um, your damnation, which is uh, actually uh, going back the, that that. That ability, I said, is a major path inheritance. So only you only get that if you don't choose your family's uh, path as a major path. Oh, David Ice Iceblade said that uh, Sam might mention it in the introduction section of here. Okay, he might. I can't go around looking for things because I am kind of on a timetable, but um, I'll try and be quick about stuff. Um. Now here's where we talk about the damnation. The dead are pushed by their urges to feel emotions and take extreme actions. The more they use their abilities, the more their urge, urge pushes them to act out. Anytime the character's cursed die pool reaches zero, her urges overtake. While in the throes of her urge, she cannot cast spell or gain any new curse dice. So basically, you can't cast spells, so you're basically down to your like Inher inherent inherent abilities as a ghost so you, it means your ghost form it means you are still not able to die but you are in the throes of your urge and you can't gain any new curse die unless you do the resolution you must take a meaningful action to express your urge if the action she takes inconveniences her or one of her crew she gains a curse die or momentum player's choice after taking the action, each dead family has a different urge they partake in. To determine which urge the character has, look into the individual families. Okay. So basically, you have the various different um, stuff with the families in that regard. We do have the torments, which I'm not going to cover too much. Basically, they are role playing. Uh, boons that you get um if like they're negative role play effects that if you delve into them or, or use them or act act them out you get a momentum uh corporeal longing is you need to um you haven't you're overwhelmed with the desire to possess someone or something even if it's a terrible inconvenient um yearning for life bring being dead disconnects a character from living. They forget about you and they move on with your lives. Um, you must make yourself as memorable as possible as that. Okay. Uh, we have the Furies, which are the first of the big, <laughs> the big families. Uh, you know how uh, they ask for this. They all ask for this. You know how fucking infuriating it is when you feel like you're not in control People scream at inanimate objects, rage at traffic, and go all incandescent at the slightest scheduling mishap. Now imagine the worst loss of control in your life, your death. So many people die angry. Life was ripped right out from under them without giving a shit about what they want. Of course they want revenge for that kind. Of course they want that. <laughs> you want that revenge for that kind of shit. Uh, we're the fucking around. <laughs> we're the fuck around and find out dead. Time to do something. 
<laughs> some finding out. Uh, we're attracted to pain and whip up rage. Um, our urge is vengeance. We want to revisit pain on people who hurt us in life. Give us as good as we got. Give give as good as we got. What do they think? That we go quietly into a good night? Get a fucking clue. Um, <laughs> there is a lot of swearing in this. <laughs> uh, we want them to suffer. We want their anger, their hurt, their suffering. And, and that all ends if they die on us. It isn't always easy to rein ourselves in. So basically, they beat people up who torment. They they tor they torment the tormentors and make sure that they don't die because if they do die, then they leave bodies. Anger drives us but doesn't own us. The more you indulge, the worse your anger gets. Don't let that overtake you. Uh, those who do are insufferable. Quiet places help us calm our urges. I don't know about other dead, but we always feel better without the constant nattering of people. I like to go to haunt graveyards, but you'll also find some of our other brethren chilling out in churches and libraries because they're quiet. Um, come to the pit. Something about losing yourself in a blast in in the blast beats and power cords really opens up the soul. So they like to get, they like to blow off steam to try and get that rage out. Uh, fades are the arbiters. Once a year, we vote on what we call the rulers. Fades are supposed to take, make decisions on conflicts and punish rule breakers, but they do a lot of meddling in other people's shit. They do extra stuff like decide who's worth, who's worthy of vengeance or if someone's killed too many times. It's supposed to be fair, but some, the same assholes got voted in every year. There is some dead politics for you. Um, I'm not going to go into their relations with other people. I do feel as though the, um, and we'll get into it with the vampires, uh, there's probably a lot of animosity towards the Gaki, who are the ghost eaters in Hungary. Uh, we often use our magic to incite rage in others. We love the sound of a mob whipped to a frenzy or a jerk ready to run someone else off the road. You'll find us buttering up close family members of our victims only to use them against them in the future. Anything to get our revenge or have it play out for others. Uh, they have a secret spell. Um, so I guess secret spells are a single spell from a practice or something that they don't have access to already called Berserker's Focus. Sounds like a primal spell if I was going off of Berserker's. Uh, their major inheritance is once per scene, uh, while incorporeal, they can apply the passions flaring area and condition uh, as a major complication. Uh, passions flaring so, so you'll see this with all the major path inheritance for the dead, I think, is that they will do some sort of area effect uh, because they're, like, imparting emotions onto people. Uh, we have the various motifs here for the Furies. When casting a spell that acts as an attack, bleed one additional curse die to apply effect to a second target. Um, there's some stuff with emotional attunement where you can apply a frayed temper status effect. I need to write that down. There's actually a uh, misspelling here where it says cure die. This is how, you, how we do um, editing. <laughs> um, mavens. Uh, so we, we go into... Oh, uh, sorry, I missed one. Uh, the ethereal, uh, when casting a spell with ethereal attunement, uh, you can reduce the cost of that spell. Some examples if you want to play a fury, play a fury if you want to play an angel of vengeance sweeping across the city, participate in the most manic, rage filled raves in cemeteries and abandoned factories, cauterize injustice and ext with extreme prejudice. Now, I'm not going to be going through all of these as detailed as they did that one, because otherwise we're not going to get to the Hungarian time. So let's uh, continue on. 
even in death it's good so we have the mavens even in death it's a good time to it's good to make time to enjoy ourselves so these are all about like heading life to the to the highest uh sam themselves uh himself is a maven if i remember correctly from the ashcan uh we just adore new experience life has so many ups and downs and turnabouts we want to see them all because we can't feel the emotions doesn't mean we should someone should um variety is the spice of light where's the fun when using the same technique day in and day out to get a rise of people other dead might be content to fall in into tedium not me sweetie i find a new experience every night some people think it makes us shallow just because we don't sit around blithely accepting whatever death has on offer doesn't make us superficial uh, the living has something we can never get back so this is they're a little bit envious our family is divided there are two sides of the debate and no one can agree to dis disagree the way it used to work was you'd make a contract with someone they agreed and you'd help them experience something extreme no takes backs those are the sensates the moderates modernists put forward continuous consent as the standard and the contract can be voided at any time. That's a, that's a, I, I think I prefer the modernist, <laughs> modernist take. Uh, the Mavens, unlike the other families, throw the best parties. <laughs> uh, we use our magic to heighten people's emotions while we give them an experience. Our contracts often involve possession with people agreeing to let us take direct control over their bodies for a short time. So there's like consensual possession to basically give a person an experience that they wouldn't have before. Uh, they have something about emotional attunement spells where they can apply uh, effects to additional people. They can also create the, um, oh, I missed it. Um, when you look at the major path inheritance for them, uh, they can create the overstimulating area effect. Um, they can also create the passions flaring area of effect uh, as part of one of their motifs, and they can extend the duration of emotional attunements spells. We have the poltergeists. Uh, fear is natural. It is a normal reaction, and it's easy to invoke. Uh, we're the ones who foment panic. This isn't just a jump scare. Everyone knows what it's like to be afraid. We settle into our haunting. So usually it's a place, but sometimes it's a single person. So they pick a place and they haunt there. Uh, fear teaches a lesson. Ah, the lesson. That has some... That's, that's interesting. Uh, the lesson isn't specific. Like the shades, dread, and paranoia change a person. They start to avoid things that invoke those feelings. Um... Intra family politics are wild. We don't have a lot of rules, but when it comes to dealing when it comes to dealing with living, you can do what you like to them as long as you don't infringe on another poltergeist's territory. So they're a lot more territorial. You must respect your elders. Elders are anyone who's been dead longer than you, and you must ask permission to haunt. You must declare a territory. You must ask for permission to visit someone else's territory. Grand wakes are joyous affairs. Um, we laugh, blow off some steam. We also do more subdued groups, peer groups, uh, often meet weekly to do confessionals and talk through our baggage. Well, that's healthy. Um, we use magic to possess and move objects more than any other dead. You'll even find some of us have taken on a doll or scarecrow as a new body. We like to work with the physical world to invoke terror rather than manipulating an emotional state. Um, did you do? They get two secret spells, Gloom Strike and Nightmares. They have a major inheritance where they can apply the Dread effect. And I'm not going to go through their motifs. Because it's mostly just, they get an enhancement, they reduce costs, um, and, or they apply an area of effect. I will say here, it, it makes sense that they, they can do the Dread area of effect on their inheritance. And their motif, but it's kind of weird that one of the previous uh, dead uh, families that we saw do passions flare when they do the overstimulated area of effect instead. So it makes me feel like it's spread around a little bit. 
Anyway, uh, shades. Sh shocker, some take satisfaction from sorrow. I know it's not actually a shock. Nobody blames the fucking musician who writes a sad song about a breakup. And we remember. Everyone dies with some regret where others might desire some sense of closure. Us shades would rather hang on to the misery and bring it to ruin just to sing songs about our victims. We're the omens of ill fortune. We're the shadow that you can't bear to face because you see your sins looking back at you from the darkness. Uh, we seek out the guilty and spread misery. Our urge is the downfall of the deserving. Guilt can break a person or change them for the better. This sounds much like the Christmas Carol type ghosts, uh, the ghosts of Christmas past <laughs> in particular, maybe. We don't kill. For most, death terminates the possibility of reflection. We haunt the living for a purpose. Also, if you kill them, then there goes all the fun. Our family is mostly disorganized. There are elders at the top, and they'll talk about wind um, conquests and long-winded stories. There's only one ruler. Show up to the party with a story. There's only one rule. Show up to a party with a story. But if you think no rules means anything goes, you better think again. Oh no, elders will likely pick apart everything you do, critiquing your methodology, the frequency of your indulgence, and anything else they can think of. That's something I think about when you're doing that. Uh, we like to have dramatics. Uh, we love ruining the ultra-rich and corrupt, and then telling stories of it at our grand wake. <laughs> Uh, we use our magic to push people to act in dramatic ways that will out that will out their guilt. We push and prod until they are at a breaking point. Now, as far as their inheritance goes, um, when you're incorporeal, 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 you affect a miserable atmosphere, creating an air effect, making people uh, closer to guilt, being guilty and paranoid. Um, Instead of doing an area of effect, you basically create a complication that causes people to get the guilt-ridden status effect. Um, they can bleed a cursed eye to learn a, singret, a secret about someone in a scene with emotional spells, psychic spells they can apply to a sick target, and emotional spells can be reflexive. We have the Wardens and the Zeds next. Um, hopefully I can get to them quickly, and I'm going to apologize that we're going to have to blast through the hungry pretty pretty much. Uh, wardens. Mother knows best. Uh, she's the oldest of the Wardens and the leader of the family. We all look to her for guidance, and she blesses us with her wisdom. Uh, this is something that happens a lot with the Wardens, is that they're in their discussion, they talk about how mother is like the best of them and they don't refer to anyone else's mother they have everyone else is referred to as siblings basically because this mother who is lost to them is like so important um we protect kids who aren't e even theirs because it's hardwired into them when people witness an emergency they they jump to help all this other stuff uh, we use our magic in pursuit of helping others. We offer protection and succor, succor to those in need. While we try our damnedest to do no harm, if someone threatens a ward, we do not shy away from responding with force. These are kind of like guardian angels, I would say. Once per scene, while incorporeal, you can uh, distract someone and give them the confused status effect. Um, motifs. You may bleed a curse die to apply effects to another character uh, instead of yourself. Uh, bleed a curse die, bleed one less curse die, bleed an additional curse die to apply a second effect. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, Zeds. We are the end of all things. The bullet waiting to make it <laughs> make its way into your brain. Uh, we embrace our fatalism. Our urges is to, our urge is to process entropy. We do not care which emotion that invokes in you. We bring that nat to a natural conclusion. And if you do our if we do our job right, you won't feel much emotion at all. Quietude is our goal. We want to end hope, terminate pain, conclude misery, and eliminate the need for vengeance. One person, one death. We pick our targets carefully and spend our time doing it right. The more souls you introduce to a killing, the greater the likelihood of a conscious 
rushing past fate's door. Rather than having to clean up a mistake, we'd prefer not to make one in the first place. We are murderers, not monsters. Zed and colleagues. Now, this is the first family that is a corporation. They refer to each other as employees and not members. Others play at family and relations, but we know our place in the hierarchy. We all have a job to do and execute our function to the highest standards. We don't do parties. Uh, we meet in offices and hold court at boardroom tables. We discuss matters of business among other and keep it succinct and to the point. During off hours, we gather in less formal settings to discuss things. No matter how efficient and merciless a killer you might be, it helps to express what you've seen and go through it. It's not therapy, however, Zed doesn't cover those costs. Uh, anyway, we use our magic as another tool in an arsenal for killing. We prefer mundane weapons such as gun garrot, but magic it has its uses. The company prohibits possessing mortals, but you'll find Zed who do it in a pinch. Just don't tell HR. Uh, they get an extra trick uh, for their close combat attacks, which is called Death Store. It basically allows them to cause a magical poison effect that will injure your target more. Um, that's pretty cool. And... I think that's it really i'm not going to go into the motifs again i think we we've done motifs can take a long time to go through uh, we do have the haunting practices uh quickly emotional manipulation uh there is a way of dealing uh physical damage with the ability dissidence which before people are wondering if it did physically damage people or if it if stunning negated the damage it doesn't seem like it does um you can provoke people to have different emotional states. You can change the nature of a target's bonds. Uh, you can create a social code, and you can give yourself armor against non-physical attacks. Uh, incorporeality, you can send your consciousness into a willing target for a scene to gain a bonus to teamwork actions. Uh, that's a good way of maybe uh, helping out someone with those like um, documents, those contracts. Creepy doll allows you to possess an animate and animate an inanimate object. And then we have a bunch of other stuff with metascape, metaphysics. Um, basically, you can move through a barrier with a single step. You can create a projection of someone else's memory. You can create a shattered space, which is the first time we've seen that you can actually interact with the antagonist or adversary section of the game. Okay. Uh, going to the hungry now. And I have 10 minutes to cover the hungry, which is going to be crazy. I will try and give you my um, thoughts and opinions on this before. I did read this ahead of time, though it's been... It, it, stuff might get lost here. Um, someone, basically a, another person who was a hungry, captured you and turned you into a hungry. This is probably similar to a lot of other vampire media in which um, they drain you of blood and then feed, feed you their blood to turn you into a vampire. We eat people, kind of. Uh, right there, here comes the shocking part. We, need, we must eat living to survive. Flesh, guts, blood, you name it. Um, what makes us? You are undead, essentially. You are not dead like the dead are, where you're a ghost. You are still in your body and you can still heal and things of that nature. Looking for redemption. We can help you. You are not alone. Hungry systems. Feeding. Every hungry can satisfy themselves with blood. <laughs> so you can, if you're an heir or, or a gaki who heirs eat hearts, gaki eat ghosts, you can still feed on blood as an alternative, which is perfectly fine. Additionally, each hungry has a meal of choice, decided by their family or by their individual. Whenever your character eats their preferred meal, gain a curse die. For example, acetate strain memories, the black hearts emotions, and the gaki eat on fear, feed on spirits. An individual may choose to feed from 1% or 
from the 1% or people they perceive as sinners. Um, it must be a scene to do so, even if it happens off camera, so to speak. If the rest of the crew helps you, you get uh, momentum as well. Um, Nocturnal Predator, this was what I mentioned earlier. The hungry are creatures of the night, and so they get the exposure status effect when they are um, in sunlight. However, this can be mitigated by putting on like long coats, hoodies, brim hat shades, and stuff while outside. So you're not having the you're going to burst into flames thing like uh, other vampire games or media do. You're kind of like the uh, I can't remember. There was a there was a vampire show where the guy just sort of like was more uh, exhausted during the day, and it wasn't Twilight. <laughs> you also gain a plus one enhancement to influence actions during the night. So that's good to know. You have your undead strength, which we have seen before, where you can increase and you give yourself an enhancement to either your physical, mental, social area or get regenerate. And if you add more and more, you get additional banes such as fire, things of faith, holy water and things of that nature. Um, we're not going to go too much into detail because if you have the ash can, you've seen this before. Major path inheritance, uh, you have you are immortal. Any time you partake in a meal, you regain curse die. You also and, and re to regain curse die, you also heal one injury. Additionally, when you're gravely wounded, uh, the hungry passively restore their vitality from nearby people. Oh, so you can automatically regain uh, a full injury level if a mortal is present in a scene. And the mortal gains the aggravated wound status effect. There's other stuff about getting the same benefit. That That's pretty difficult. That's crazy. Um, damnation. You must feed on other people to sustain yourself. The character cannot... When you hit zero curse dice, uh, you must consume a meal of blood or substance dictated by your family as soon as possible. You cannot cast spells, use undead strength, or gain curse die until you have a meal. The resolution is that you feed based on your feeding tradition. Um, it could be your family, it could be your other stuff. Uh, if you um, if it inconvenience the party, you gain a curse die or momentum. And if the feeding is in line with your family's tradition, you gain both. Uh, you have boundless hunger, which is a thing about Eating won't won't sustain you essentially as your torment, and then uh, take what's mine is you are sort of like think everything is yours. You're like a cat in that room. <laughs> um. Okay, we're speeding through this. We have the as ascetics. Uh, they hunger for knowledge in all forms. We've always been here, um, forgotten and remembered. Information is currency. Tithe to the eldest. Uh, we don't kill the golden goose, so there's a lot of stuff in there. Um, we use our powers for secrecy, whether that's ferreting out others or protecting the, our own. We move unseen, watch our enemies, and send hidden messages. Their inheritance is that once they learn something, you don't forget it. Um, you can describe a new story element in the scene and activate it. Uh, also, when you activate Undead Strength, you may gain a plus two enhancement to your mental arena instead of one. Uh, skipping through the motifs because we don't have time, I apologize. Black Hearts. Uh, Black Hearts are the people who uh, feed off of emotion. Uh, not need, no, hunger, crave, yearn, go into absolute bonkers, frenzy over. Does that make us sound like dead? I guess it does. <laughs> they are very close to the dead, I think, it seems. Any emotion will do. I know it sounds like we're talking about lovey-dovey bullshit, but a nemesis is probably an easier person to foster a relationship with than a lover. We aren't trying to fuck people over here. But hate works just as well as joy and love. We are mercenaries mercenaries so we like who we like and hate who we hate no leaders no master we lack central leadership instead flitting from group to group as we will we keep loyalty to each other and that's the rule of law 
Uh, we use our powers to get close to people and earn their loyalty. We care more about humanity than the other families. We use our powers to protect those who are loyal to us and beat the shit out of those who cross our paths. Um, this is stuff about um, for their inheritance. If you take it as a major, you get a plus two bond to mortals instead of one. Um, you also have a negative bond with other hungry, but it always <laughs> starts at two. So you always have a negative two bond <laughs> or a, neg a negative bond at level two for other hungry ah uh, man uh black hearts are crazy um gaki ghosts are ours we claim, claim dominion over ghosts not the dead but lesser creatures uh some call them phantasms but let's not kid ourselves join us if you want power bring your secrets from beyond death is the beginning and the end you are what you eat I've never eaten another hungry, but some of the less palatable Gaki brethren, we sometimes call them parasites, though it's hardly an original name, eschew the spiritual meal and take a bite of from one of their own. No, that kind of behavior will not do. We are not, when we're in a bind, we summon ghosts to our defenses. We can always make more if they perish in the struggle. You may ask, though, why would a ghost serve, serve us when we're preparing um, to eat them? Well, we make deals, <laughs> just as the curse make deals. Serve us, and we won't sate our hungry, hunger on you. It's a fair transaction. Our powers make us necromancers. We can sense death on the wind, see the last vision of murder, victim, and coerce ghosts to do our bidding. All of the required an expenditure of blood, though it won't be our, ours, nor does it have to sur be surrendered voluntarily. Your dealings with ghosts give you power over them. Once per session, you can summon a phantasm. This is your major inheritance with the Fright Template. That is a little bit... That's the stage above Shiver, I think. So it's actually a pretty potent uh, enemy if you're bringing that in, I think. Um, the phantasm cannot be killed to do anything that would cause itself harm, but it cannot resist you from feeding, feeding from it, which destroys it in the process. Uh, do, 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 heirs. Uh, we rule over the masses. Uh, we eat hearts. We'll take hearts from our prey. Pray. We are true royalty. Carmilla Karnstein of the epitomous 19th century novel is the latest of our family heads. She created the most recent dynasty. Uh, you want to know who really runs this town? It's us. We control the banks. <laughs> The family provides. If you have a venture, the family will give you the resources you need to get off the ground. We're who you want to be. You are. We are who you want us to be. We feast on those who need us, whether they're beggar for our financial fortune or dedicated fans liking all of our posts. Our family dinners are lavish affairs where we show off to each other. All our donors are willing, even those who don't survive the night, and the reward from them is generous. Uh, we can satisfy ourselves on blood alone, and for those we want to keep around, we just do that. For those deserving greater sacrifice, why, it becomes a sin of the heart. You know the easiest way to solve things? Throw money at the problem. <laughs> Our power it makes us excellent at putting people at ease before taking them for all they're worth. Their inheritance is they get a social advantage, which is awesome. That's the first time I've seen advantage show up in this, these rules. If you eat in a human heart in the session, another character with plus one advantage over social advantage over you loses their advantage. Pretty good. House Bathory. Uh, I will speed this up a little bit. Um, House Bathory, Bathory usually take people who are from a lower class um, and sort of like what's what's the word like basically they're they grab people <laughs> they grab beggars and turn them into uh, our history is from the Countess Elizabeth Bathory who bathed in virgin blood and she also murdered 600 to 6,000 60,000 people to get that blood um we luxuriate in her honor uh they do say that 
you can uh, bathe in blood to get the satisfaction from it instead of drinking from it. Essentially, you just need to have like a bowl or something, put your face in it or put parts of your body in into the blood. It doesn't need to be full submersion. Uh, are we murderers? Not if we can help it. Um, we're often hunted because of the reputation. Uh, we never show our insecurities. Almost every Bathrite was was someone on the wrong side of the track. Someone blackballed or ignore. This curse is our chance to take what we were never given. These titles, this pageantry, it's all affectation, sweetie. So Bathrites typically have like a title that's associated with them that is fake. Like if you are the princess of the city or something like that, you, that is all just hyperbole. If you're the countess of of Wall Street, you are not like literally like royalty. They just like using those terms. Um, this their ability is that you basically rub blood over your face and <laughs> you are you can clear a status condition. Iscariots are Judas Iscariot was the first one supposedly, or like they're based off of it. Um, they feed on flesh. We bear our lineage proudly. Judas's betrayal was a noble act. It was. It was. This is the first time we have a Christian-based uh, family. I think um, we're here to fight. The cause matters more than friendships. Anyone can scrap with us. We organize in cells, fraternities, and sororities, which often include mortals and other lineages. We unironically claim the moniker of Justice Warriors. You'll find us fighting alongside the oppressed, the downtrodden, and the silenced voices. We feast on those who deserve it and, and those who sacrifice, whose sacrifice is worthy. We stick together most of the time. Family dinners are violent affairs, mix, mixing politics, fisticuffs, and biting in equal measure. Of course, we rarely stay in power for long. Someone always comes to take our place. Our powers give us a natural talent for inciting violence, rallying up emotions. We're adept at tracking our targets, striking from the shadows. And we're at best when we're the underdogs. We always get back up in a round or two. Uh, major inheritance. Uh, if you already have a bond, you can form a temporary bond at rating one with someone if you make a promise. And you can increase the rating by one step if you already have a bond to them. And there's other stuff here that I'm not going to go into detail about for the mechanics because I'm not sure about it. And I don't want to put out bad information. Uh, Vorare. Uh, these are the people that eat souls. They made a deal with a demon named Abaddon who uses she, her pronouns. Uh, we are not loved, but feared. We use our powers to protect others. Our patron is absent, but we hold court. Uh, we feast on those who stand in the way of change. Our family di dinners are hunts. We let our victims loose on the street and arm them to give them a fair chance. And then the game is on. Sometimes you just gotta kill the king's right hand and see where the pieces land. Let them become drones, our bellies filled with what made them whole. You know, I could see with the heirs, if you remove someone's heart, they're still alive, but they become a drone. Uh, major path inheritance. Uh, they have others with your purifying flame. When making attack in service of protecting someone you've sworn to protect, you gain the flaming tag. Ah, uh, yes. These people are flaming. Uh, <laughs> and then there's something about re reducing damage from flames. Uh, that was the last one. We we did the we got to the last one of the hungry. Um, let's look at the predatory practices. You have the vital force, which is uh, you use your vital essence. Uh, I guess to assist you. Foul humors. You get to retaliate against attack with your very own essence. You can steal someone's vitality. You can attack a target and make them bleed. You can harm yourself to gain a boost, and you can alter the life state, target's life state, to the point of undeath with vital flow. Uh, we have Iron Edict, which is sort of your manipulation abilities. You have Bestial Familiar, which allows you to control animals. Dire Command, which allows you to control someone else. 
Inhabit the beast allows you to possess an animal. Uh, instill dread um, creates an aura of command around yourself. Tabula rasa makes someone forget for a short time. Uh, Tabula rasa, I think I remember that from um, the Ashcan, or maybe it was from uh, episode 300 of the Onyx Pathcast. Um, that one was fun. Uh, in any case, uh, Smoke and Shadow. Uh, this is your stealth abilities. You have Dark Embrace. You become one with the shadows. Uh, you have Ebon Strike, which you use uh, the darkness to attack an enemy. Gloom Strike. You can plunge the area into darkness. Personal Predator. You can command someone's shadow to attack them. That's crazy. And then you have Tenebrous Sight, where you can just see uh, clearly even in magical darkness. So a lot of stuff that you can utilize in this. Oh, God, I didn't do the secret spells for all these guys. Um, let's put out a few secret spells in here. Um, do, do you have Predator's Roar for the House of Bathory. You have Shared Senses with the Heirs. You have Forbidden Temptation with the Gaki. And the Black Hearts Gain Homewrecker, whatever that means. Thank you all for staying with me this extra 10 minutes as I covered the hungry. I apologize that I had to speed through it, but it is much appreciated. Uh, I have to sign off. If there's anything else you wish to know, uh, please uh, come back here next week where I will be covering the next previews that Onyx Path is doing. Um, if I look at curseborn's page in the updates section it is going to tell me that the next preview we have is going to be on the 10th which is in two days which is the outcasts and then the 15th which is also a tuesday is going to be the primals which is going to be awesome i feel sad that i'm not going to be able to do the sorcerers when they immediately come out but people are going to be flipping their lid on sorcerers i feel everyone's waiting for that one uh in any case uh i've been the awkward gm corbin you can find me at youtube at the awkward gm corbin i'm going to put that link in down below thank you for sticking around david iceblade and of course, you can catch the Curseborn uh, Kickstarter if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. My voice is going to be gone. Love you all.